Hey you guys, it's Peter and welcome to my channel. Peter likes books because I do. <laughs> Seven letters, spell it out. How are you guys doing today? Okay, I know it is August 13th, but I have not done my July wrap up from last month and this is a video that I'm trying to do over here on a regular basis. Do my monthly wrap up from the month before. I also wanna say, that was it yesterday or was it today when I was vlogging? I think it was yesterday. I was talking about reviewing books and let me know what you think about this in the comment section. Um, there was a year where every book that I read, I did a full review of over here. And I did it for those people that had read the book or those people that wanted to know if they should read the book. And I also did it for the authors and the publishers, you know, to like just talk about something and get some conversation going about the books that were out there. I stopped doing that because it just seemed to me that a lot of people weren't really that interested in the reviews. I don't know, let me know. Um, but I think that if I'm going to do it again, one of the reasons that I stopped doing it is that it's really, really difficult to do a review and do a spoil-free review. If you're somebody out there that's done spoiler-free reviews, be spoil-free review. If you're somebody out there be the, be, that has done <laughs> before, I can't speak today. If you're somebody that has done spoiler-free reviews, they're very difficult to do, especially when you have a, tr a strong opinion about the book because you're like, well, I really didn't like this, but I can't say what it is, so trust me when you get to that part in the book. And the other thing is, is that I, one of the reasons why I got on BookTube was because very few people in my life read. So I wanted to have conversations about books, <laughs> but that's what I do on my channel is have conversations about books. So if I come over here and then I'm not talking about the books because I'm kind of talking around whatever the subject is, you know, it was like when I did my review of Mexican Gothic, I couldn't really have a real discussion about it. Even though I just said, I think this book is meh, which I did. Um, but I couldn't really say, the, without giving away things, the reasons why. So if I go back to doing reviews over here, I'm thinking about, and, and I would like to do a review for every book that I read because I, re I read a lot more now than I used to. Um, I would really like to do a spoiler-free review, or I would like to do spoiler-free reviews over here. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section below. I mean, I would let everybody know, like at you know, the beginning of the video, this is a spoiler, spoiler-free. No. No, that's not what I'm trying to say. That there would be spoilers in the, vid in the video. Like I would, <laughs> I can't get it right today. I would say in the video, <laughs> this is where every other YouTuber just like stops it and restarts it and I'm like, forget all that. Um, but I would like spoil things in the book. I would talk about the characters. I would talk about what happened because it's hard for me to have a conversation about a book unless I'm really doing that. You know what I mean? So, let me know what you think about that in the comment section below. I'm thinking about doing that anyway. Um, I might do some of the books that I've recently read that I had a strong opinion about. Like, for example, um, I just read the book. I don't know who, who it's by, and I don't want to look it up right now because I've got everything queued up. But I just read the book We Were Here, or We Were Never Here, about uh, the two girls, uh, the Emily and Kristen, that are like best friends since college. And then the whole book starts with them going to Chile and something has happened on their previous trip to Cambodia. And um, I have very strong feelings about this book. And so, uh, like, and I, even like when I was giving it my rating, like I felt like I needed to justify my rating because um, <clears throat> I gave it four out of five stars. So, and, and talking to my friend Tanya, she gave, she would have given it five out of, she doesn't rate her books, but she would have given it five out of five stars because she just read it. So I felt like there was like a conversation that I needed to have, but I didn't feel like I could do that because I didn't want to spoil it for people, if that makes sense. Okay, so let me know what you think about that in the comment section below, that I would do completely spoiler reviews over here, okay? If that makes any sense. All right, the book that I'm currently reading, I do want to say this. <clears throat> I've been kind of going back and forth with reading like every third book I've been reading as young adult. My first year on booktube, I read tons and tons of young adult and I love young adult. Um, but I've kind of gotten away from that as I've read more literary fiction and I've read more like mysteries and thrillers, which is probably my favorite right now. Well, y'all know cozy mysteries are my favorites. But I've been going back and reading um, some young adult, uh, like every third or fourth book I've been reading as young adult mostly by authors that um, I'm really excited to read or if I've heard great things about the book. So, the fourth book by Maureen Johnson, the Truly Devious, the fourth book in the Truly Devious series by Maureen Johnson came out this summer. It's called The Box in the Woods. And it is so, it is, it, 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 
What is wrong with me today? It is so good, you guys, okay? If you've read the three previous um, Truly Devious books, they're about this detective, teenage detective named Stevie that goes to this Ellingham Academy and it's like this very prestigious private school that you don't, they don't charge any of the students to go there, but they handpick who's gonna go there and basically while you're at this academy, you work on this project, okay? And the reason that Stevie went to Ellingham Academy was to solve this mystery, this murder or disappearance that occurred in like the 30s, okay? And it went back and forth between the 30s and the present. It was so well done. And I loved the first three books, but when it ended, I thought, there can't be any more books in this series. It must just be a trilogy. So when I saw this book come out, I was like, what, how is this, how is she going to go forward with this? Well, she does. And I have to tell you that I believe the fourth book is the best book in the series. And it finds Stevie and her friends at this camp <clears throat> where something had occurred in the 70s. And so it goes back and forth between the 70s and today, telling the story. And it's very much like a slasher movie on Friday the 13th. Very much like a slasher movie from the 70s. So kind of like if Friday the 13th, the movie, you know, was like real. And um, a lot of people are talking about horror movies. And my friend Melissa and I were starting a horror movie podcast. But anyway... Um, Final Girls uh, but that I just read, uh, or not Final Girls, the Final Girls support group that I just read by Grady Hendrix. That was another book that talked about horror movies. So, you know, it's interesting that there's all these references to it right now, but it is so, so, so well done. And I'm not done with it yet. I still have like, well, two hours my time, but I listen to audiobooks really fast. So let's get into what I read for the month of July. I read 13 books in the month of July. I was very proud of myself because June was a very slow month. So the first book that I read, hold on, let me get down here. Okay, the first book that I read, or the first book that I completed in July was Mexican Gothic um, by Sylvia Marina Garcia. That was my, I think my June pick for Peter's Book Club. If you don't know, I have a book club. Um, I have the True Crime Book Club, a True Crime Book Club that I run with my good Judy Mel. Um, and I also have Peter's Book Club, which is where I just post a book every month on my um, Instagram. I typically post it on the 15th to tell you what the book is gonna be. For the month of August, I did not post it on my Instagram, but I did do a video about it. The book is Falling by TJ Newman. That is the book. And I'm trying to pick like books that are on the bestseller list or books that just came out. So that's the book for August. So Mexican Gothic, I did a full video about it. If you wanna see it, that video is called, uh, I thought this book was meh, is what I call that video. Um, I gave it three stars. The next book that I read was by AC, or Lev AC Rosen, and the book was called Camp. And um, it was about, it's like about this uh, it, very interesting book. And I didn't really know a lot going into it, what I would think about it. But it's about um, this LGBT uh, QIA plus camp and um, that these kids go to every summer. And it's like their time to feel really comfortable in the world. And it's interesting, like reading this book brought up so many thoughts of mine from being in high school, like what a, a camp like this would have done for me had I been in high school. And... Um, Interestingly enough, I didn't know if camps like this existed or not. And then I saw somebody on Instagram say they were going to work. Um, Ethan Hefcote, I don't know if you know who that is. He's a, he's a YouTuber. But he is working at a camp, I think in California, in Los Angeles, that's like an LGBTQIA plus camp. And I just think it's the coolest thing, right? So it's about this guy <clears throat> that identifies as gay. And um, he... Like every other summer, he's ha had this crush, but this guy is like very athletic and jock like and all this kind of stuff and never pays him any attention because he's like all drama focused and theater and all that kind of stuff. If you ever saw the movie Camp, it kind of reminds me of that a little bit. So, anyway, he really wants to get this guy. And so he changes over the course of the school year everything about himself to get this guy and gives up theater and gives up everything that he loves to just get this guy. And so it's kind of like his friends calling him out over the course of the summer and this guy getting to know him and the things that he... Anyway, it's really a great book. It's really, really a great book. And I ended up giving it five stars. I loved it. The next book that I read was The Less Dead by Denise Mina. I gave it four stars. Denise Mina wrote Conviction, which I think if you're going to read one of her books, it's the better of the two. She's written several books. Um... Conviction was about a woman whose, oh, my husband's calling me, whose husband leaves her for her best friend and she goes on the road to uh, kind of follow this true crime podcast that she wants to solve and with her is her best friend's husband. So it's a very interesting book, but it was fantastic and all done to the backdrop of this true crime book. Um, uh, 
The Less Dead is about a woman that has been adopted and her, her adoptive mother recently um, has passed away. And so she's going to try to find her biological mother and in finding her biological mother, her biological family, she gets mixed up in this mystery murder that occurred. It's very well done. It's very well done. My friend Tanya read it too because I recommended it to her and she's like, this is really dark. And it was really dark, um, but it was a really interesting mystery. It's something like I have never read before. Then the next book was The Babysitter, My Summers with a Serial Killer um, by Liza Rodman. And that was our book, our true crime book for, uh, was that for June or July? I don't remember. I feel like it was, it was June. And um, it was okay. It was, I gave it three stars. It was not my favorite book ever. Um, we t I've talked about it, I feel like, at nauseam at this point <laughs> because it was our true crime book of the book. And not a lot of people in the book club really liked it. We all agreed that it would have made a fantastic memoir had the true crime piece just been kind of referenced in it if it wasn't like the majority of the book. The writing was fantastic, but the fact that it went back and forth, it was very, people compared it to The Devil in the White City, but not as good. The next book that I read was um, Ola Poppy, How to Come Out in a Walmart Parking Lot and hold on a second and other life lessons by Ch john paul brammer and it was a book of like essays it was fantastic okay and this guy is a columnist and it was so funny like some of the stories were so endearing and some of the funny the stories were really funny and um it, it's just about his coming out and how I people people identify him as Latino, um, and his working for you know it just it, I don't want to ruin it for anybody, but like if you're somebody out there that loves like David Sedaris, Augustine Burroughs, this is some this is like some writing that you will really really love. Okay, and it's all done to like people writing him for this kind of like advice column that's called Ola Poppy, and. Um, I don't know, it's just really interesting, the story that develops and how he becomes that way. And it all kind of comes off of these uh, like dating hookup apps. That's where it all starts. Is that like, because people perceived him to be Latino, um, even though it was only his mother that was Latino and he never spoke Spanish and whatever, um, growing up, he, he didn't know Spanish. And so people on these dating apps would see, based on how he physically looked, they would say, hola papi. And um, so it was like, it went into this whole like thing. So each chapter is somebody writing him an advice question and then basically him answering the question with this essay. It's fantastically done, you guys. It's fantastically done. I gave it four stars there were some of the stories that i just felt like maybe weren't as fitting in this that they they weren't as cohesive that i thought would have belonged maybe in a, another like uh anthology or whatever you would call that so another essay book so that's why i uh, put that the last thing he told me by laura dave is probably one of the best books that i have read this year <clears throat> um it was about this woman that um, was married to this guy and he was like in tech company or something and he had a teenage daughter from a previous marriage and he goes missing and leaves them all this cash and then like he's on the run and then people are trying to find out what happened to him and she is completely clueless as is the teenage daughter that really despises her because she's a new stepmom and so it's them trying to figure out what happened it's one of the best mysteries i've read in a long long time and it really lingered with me after i read it too um and it's been on the bestseller the new york times bestsellers for a while the the maidens by alice uh, michaelides was one of my july books for peter's book club um it was about this woman hold on a second i almost deleted a book uh, this woman that had gone through some very serious tragedies and her niece went to school in Cambridge and her best friend was murdered. And so she gets her there to help her kind of under false pretenses to like soothe her and make her feel better. And really it's because she falls right into solving this murder mystery about these girls that are being killed on the campus. Um, I can tell you, I didn't think it was that bad. I ended up giving it, um, oh, I give it five stars. Mm, I'd probably go back and give it maybe four and a half, four stars. My best friend despised this book. She hated it. She thought it was so bad. And she loved The Silent Patient, which was his first book or his previous book. I don't know. It was very dark. It reminded me of something else, but I, I kept on like, I kept on thinking this reminds me of something else. I will tell you this. I had no idea what was going to happen at the end of this book. I think that's why I gave it five stars. The, the mystery was so well woven. It was so tight that I literally had no idea what was happening until the very end. And then I was like, wow, like I'm impressed with that. Um, that was not the case with my best friend. She kind of had it figured out. 
The next book that I read was The Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix, which was probably my most anticipated book of the summer or of this year. And um, Grady Hendrix is one of my all-time favorite authors of life. He has written um, the Southern, the last book was The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires, which is fantastic. Um, the book before that, what did he, uh, My Best Friend's Exorcism. Uh, there's only one book of his that I haven't read. It's called We Sold Our Souls. And he also read Horror Store, which is like a, this mystery that takes place kind of like in an Ikea. But it's very, not paranormal, it's otherworldly. It's very good. It's very well done. And it hasn't gotten great ratings, but I really loved it. The Final Girl Support Group is about, if, if you take every a famous horror movie that's ever been put out like scream halloween friday the 13th what are the other ones in there i'm trying to think um shoot i can't remember but anyway if those were like actual events that really occurred in real life they weren't movies but then they base the movies off of those real lives and there really truly was a final girl who'd be the last one standing the, the survivor at the very end um what were the other movies oh texas chainsaw massacre that was the fourth one there's a fifth one i can't remember what the fifth one was but anyway then that girl i think it oh it was the santa claus ones you know the santa claus ones that was the last one um silent night deadly night i think that was what they were called but anyway um or black christmas maybe it could have been that one i don't know i don't know i've seen black christmas the new one it was horrible but i think it was okay so anyway and i don't know sleepaway camp maybe was one of them anyway if those girls were the final girls they're in a support group okay and then all of a sudden somebody has figured out who they are and where they are and is basically trying to take them out one by one it's fantastically done it goes so much deeper than that. So much deeper. It is so well done, you guys. Five out of five, 10 out of 10, 20 out of 20, 100 out of 100. It was one, it was one of the best books I've read in two years. It was fantastic. Five years. The next book I read was Jeremy Robinson, The Dark. I was just trying to think about this book the other day. I was like, what was that book called? This book was actually really good. Um, I ended up giving it five stars. It was about this guy that had been in the military and he was 28 and he was living at home in like these McMansions uh, with his mom and his mom's new boyfriend, I think, and his younger sister when the like apocalypse happens. But it's not like the apocalypse like you think. It's like, it's so weird and different, but his sense of humor is hilarious. And so it's like him, it's zombies and all that kind of stuff, okay? If you love all that, that's what it is. And it's really, really well done. And it goes in a whole other direction that you would never think, okay? Um, it's very, very well done. And it's called The Dark, and it's by Jeremy Robinson. I think I saw it because it was on the bestseller list, and it just came out. And, like, in 24 hours, it was on the bestseller list because he's written other books. I really, really liked it. Okay, Hairprint, Hairpin Bridge by Taylor Adams. Now, I, the first book by Ta Taylor Adams that I read was No Exit, and I thought it was fantastic. I love No Exit. To this day, it's one of my favorite books, mystery books, right? It's about a girl that is going to see her mom. She's dying in a hospital, and she's got to make it there. I think it's on Christmas or New Year's or something in Colorado, and she gets stuck at this rest stop. This one is about this girl whose twin sister was murdered on this, or she took her life on this hairpin, hair, hairpin bridge is what it's called, and so she goes out there to meet with the police officer that investigated it to find out what happened to her sister. It's so bizarre. I really did not like this book. It reminded me of like Wrong Turn, one of those horror movies. I feel like a lot of these books try to be like, like scary movies that have horror movies that have scary movies that have happened from the past. I don't know. The whole thing took place in like one day. It was nerve wracking. I didn't love reading. I don't like books that make me nervous. Scared is one thing. I love to be scared reading a book. Like nervous, like what's going to happen next. I don't love that. Okay, the next book that I read was uh, The Frightfully Fortune, The Misfortune Book of 20 by Gina DeLeon. It was fantastic. Five out of five stars. It's Halloween again in Sinful, Louisiana. I'm not going to ruin it for you, but everybody out there should be reading The Misfortune series by Gina DeLeon. It is like my favorite series that I've ever read of life. It is so well done, and each one just gets better and better and better. So it was the Halloween one, and... There was a Halloween one earlier in the series, and this is the second Halloween one. So it was really, really good. And there was lots of good uh, carnival food there. There was, you know, uh, not elephant ears, but what's the other one? I can never remember what it's called. But anyway, there was all kinds of food. I love that. I was like reading this at the beginning, and I had like been, re well, before that, I was reading these like dark books, you know? And then I started listening to it. I was like, I like, think I need another cozy mystery. So I was so happy when it came out. 
and I was like 20 minutes in and it's like the murder happens at the, or something happens at the beginning of the book and then like um, Fortune goes should we meet back at my house for like uh, so we can gather our notes and we can have some treats or she says for tr so we can have some snacks and we can gather our notes and I was so excited I was like yes we're back in Lu Central Louisiana again and so they're always talking about their snacks and what they're having to eat I just love it I love the cozy mystery so much and then um, I read The Taking of Jake Livingston by Ryan Douglas. Now, I had heard a lot about this book, and I was not real excited about reading this book. It was like this paranormal book about a guy that was a psychic. It was supposed to have an LGBT theme to it. This book, you guys, was fantastic. It was fantastic. I read it in like 24 hours. I think I did. Let me see. Started on the 24th, ended it on the 25th, yeah. Um, I gave it five stars. It was fantastic. It was so much more than I thought it would be. It deals with so many issues, but all of the issues, it really kind of reminded me of Sean David Hutchinson a little bit in how Sean David Hutchinson takes very important issues, but he makes them part of the story and part of the characterization. So the character is addressing those issues as the character he or she is going through. Sean David Hutchinson is one of my favorite authors of life is going through whatever they're going through. And in this case, it's about this kid who is being, who is psychic or medium kind of, like he can see things and, or people that have passed and he's being haunted by one of them. Okay. And there's a reason why, and he can't figure it out. But at the same time, there's all of these other issues, coming out issues. All It's just, it's fantastically done, you guys. It is so fantastically done. I highly recommend it. And then the last book that I read was People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry, which was my second book for Peter's Book Club. I did a, a double feature for July. People We Meet on Vacation. It's about these two best friends that have been friends since college. Uh, totally different than We Were Never Here. And they travel all over the world together. And they each year is a different vacation that they take every summer. <clears throat> but then something happens when they're in Croatia before the book starts that you don't know what happened and it's affected their relationship and they're no longer talking. So this, the main character, she realizes that he is what is missing from her life. And so she tries to get him to go on this trip. She kind of manipulates it and uh, she doesn't necessarily tell the truth to get him to go on this vacation with her. Says it's for work and whatever so that they can like maybe rekindle this friendship and whatever and it's what happens over time i mean y'all know okay it's a rom-com and it was fantastic and i was bawling my eyes out at the pool when i finished it i loved it so much so those are the 13 books that i read in the month of july i loved them did you take notes if not go back and watch the video and write down the one write down the ones you want to uh, see anyway um i love you guys and the reason i don't put them in the comment section below is then nobody will watch the video they'll just read the comment section. So anyway, I love you guys and I will see you in my next video. Bye.